I'm in the process of um, trying to build myself an inverted L antenna based on the design of uh, Golf Mike Zero Oscar November X-Ray lens uh, inverted L um, primarily for 40 meters and 80 meters now as part of it it has a, a 7 megahertz trap um, this is the article which I got off the internet it was in Practical Wireless in 2004 um, and he describes building a, a trap out of uh, some RG58 you wrap it around a former um, and uh, that will create your, your, your trap which is resonant at 7.1 megahertz so I've gone away and uh, built one and this was Mark 1 the only problem was I haven't got any in the article it describes a uh, 40 millimeter diameter waste pipe I've got some 32 millimeter diameter waste pipe so I built it and thought oh, it won't make that much difference <laughs> how wrong I was so I went I'll come back to that one but this is the final one which I uh, did some searching on the internet and uh, found out if you're using 32 millimeter then if you make the coax length 180 centimeters you'll you'll get yourself a resonant trap for 40 meters so this is the, the this is it built it's not finished yet I haven't put the ends on but uh, I was going to show how I tested it um, yes the way I was going to test the trap um, I saw this on another video was to basically make a a sort of grid dip meter um, so what I've got here is a, it's a PL259 uh, for RG213 and then I've got a piece of plastic which just happens to be the same diameter as a, a piece of 213 so that's screwed into the end of the PL259 and then there's a coil of signal wire uh, it's just it's about 20 coils of wire it's not critical um, I think it, it needs to be about at least 14 I think um, but this one's 20 so I've wound that on the end and then the, the two ends of the coil one's connected to the pin and one's connected to the shield uh, you can't see where they're connected but they're inside and then I've got my trusty cheap and cheerful AW07A um, ant antenna analyzer which was bought off eBay a couple of Christmases ago um, and what you do put that on the end of the analyzer and you've got yourself a dip meter. The idea is if you put something in the proximity of that coil and it's resonant at the frequency that it's transmitting you'll see a, a dip on the meter. So I'm going to show this working. Right, so hopefully you can see see the display. It's, uh, it's a bit of a reflection off the lights in here. But uh, right, this is the coil, the, the trap. Put the trap over the uh, the coil on the dip meter and then if you look at the frequency display well it's currently on 6 6 8 megahertz and the, you see the SWR is is way off so if I gradually increase the frequency to bring it into the 7 track you see it's, uh, the SWR has come down I'll we'll just wind it back so there we go it's 9.9 .9. and then as we bring it into the band the SWR drops. Now it's not the real SWR, it's just a it's an indication that it's resonating. So I take it up and down the band. So the sweet spot is is a little bit below 7.1 which is the target frequency. But it's near I think it'll be near enough. Near enough so as I say, that was the that was Mark Two. This was Mark One, where I'd uh, I'd done it, but I built it on the wrong former. I just counted the number of coils. As I say, this was 32 millimeters rather than being 40. So it obviously affects affects the inductance. So if I put that over the uh, the coil, and then I go back to the display. As you can see, it's nowhere near it's not affected in fact I need to wind it all the way up to around 8.6 
There so you go. Yes, the glass starts dropping. The sweet spot is about 8.6. Take that one off. Put me uh, Mark II on back on just to double check. Again, one frequency down, not up. Yeah, bringing it into the 40 meter band. And it's just where I start dropping. And slightly below 7.1, but uh, as you go lower, the Mr. Bar goes up, which is actually the impedance. So the impedance is 50. And goes back up. So, that's a coaxial trap, and that's how you measure it with a dip meter if you haven't got one.